the Lord shall renew their strength. They are mount up with wings like eagles. They will run and not be weary. They will walk and not faint. Maybe because I waited a week later, I can now run up and down the aisle. Can we give the Lord a hand clap for waiting? Hallelujah. Listen, point number one, it's okay to delay some of your plans sometimes. Amen. 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 When God directs you to. Amen. Amen. So when God directs you to wait, uh, some people may say that you're procrastinating, but, but when God directs you to, uh, you're not procrastinating. You're just operating in his time. And I've discovered in my near 70 years that it's best for me to operate in God's time than my time. Because I've done some foolish things in this life. Amen. Truth be told. Amen. Some foolish things. Because I was doing it in my strength. And I did it based on what was comfortable for me. I wish I could go back and do some things differently. Amen. But but the rest of the time that I have, I'm, I'm going to do it God's way. And I wish I have a church that will go along with me. Everything we do, we try to do it in a way that pleases God. May I encourage you in this new year, before you do anything, will you ask the question, am I pleasing God with my decision. You're going to discover you're going to have less heartache, Amen. less disappointment. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You'll be able to cope better with life. You'll avoid some tragic mistakes if you'll just ask yourself the question, am I pleasing God with my decision? Amen. Just, just, just that. I'm not asking you to go to some therapist. Just asking you to, to, to base your action based on if it pleased God or not. Amen. Uh, I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll change the, the 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 direction of the family. We'll we'll we'll, we'll have some changes in the marriage. Trust me. The church and the way you live, even on your job, you'll see some change if you will base your decision on pleasing God with what you do. Well, praise God. Let's talk about the word for, for a little bit. And I, I just want you to go, if you can, to Second Chronicles, uh, chapter, Second Chronicles chapter 7. Hallelujah. And the theme for the message is, if you will do this, God will do that. Amen? If you will do this. And like me, I'm sure uh, uh, you, you got a lot of cards in the mail during the holidays. Amen? And usually the cards will say something, Merry Christmas and a happy and prosperous new year. Or if you got a new year's card, it'd probably say, may you have a happy, successful, promising, prosperous new year. And, and, and those, those words are encouraging. And sometimes if you're like, can you read the card over again? Praise the Lord. And the people who send these cards, they mean well. But, but, but it's out of their control, you see, if you have a happy and a prosperous new year. Amen? A week later, some of them forget that they sent you the card. Don't even remember what they wrote in it. Praise God. But I want to give you a word today that to do, you're going to have that which is a happy and successful and prosperous new year. It doesn't mean everything will go right, but the Lord your God 
God will be with you. And he'll get you through it. And at the end of the year, you'll be able to say, I had a wonderful year. Because I have to tell you that I've heard so many people, so many have told me around the end of the year, Pastor, I can't wait for 2019 to be over. This is my worst year. So my message today is if you will do this, God will do that. And we're going to look at 2 Chronicles chapter 7. So if you will do this, God will do that. I'll go a step further and I'll say, if you will give God your this, watch him do that which he pleases to do or give you what he has in store for you. Did you get that? If you give God your this, Watch him do that with what you have given him. And some of you have made resolutions of what you'd like to accomplish in the new year. Everybody does that at the beginning of the year. And some folks have already ripped up that sheet with the resolutions. Am I right? They already given up on it. But I'm here to tell you today that you can still achieve those things in your life. If you will do this, which are some things I'm going to lay out for you today. If you will give God your this, he will do that. Amen? Hallelujah. The things that you're, 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 you're wishing and hoping for him to do. Number one. He says, if you believe and not doubt, if you give him your faith, did you get that? If you believe and not doubt, whatever you ask of my father, that I will do unto you. But you got to believe and not doubt. If you will believe, let believe be the best. If you will believe, watch God do that. Amen. Watch God give you what the promises that he has set aside just for you in his word. So just to set the premise for the message, this, in the context of this message, is what you do. Did you get that? So when I refer to this, it's what you do. It's what you have. It's what you own. Amen? It's what you're in possession of. Whether it's your finances, your time, your gifts, your services. Amen? And even yourself. You take care of the this. And watch God takes care of the that. Those things that you have a desire or a delight for, amen, or a strong desire for. Those things that you, you're, you're, you spend your time, you know, uh, thinking about those things. And you, you want them desperately, and I'm sure that each and every one of you, if I was to go around and ask, do you have a burning need? Do you have a desire? Do, is there something you'd like God to do for you? Each one of you, you know the that. You know it well. Pastor, I want that. Amen? The formula is, if you will do this, God will do that. And I'm going to go to scripture today to share with you some things that God promised the children of Israel. Let me just say to you, God's love is unconditional. Did you get that? God loves you no matter what. He loves you whether you're rich or poor. Some folks believe God only loves poor people. No, God loves some rich people too. Amen? 
He loves you whether you're male or female. God loves you. Whether you're black or white, God loves you. Whether you live uptown or downtown, God loves you. Whatever your circumstances is, God loves you. And let me just say, if you're a homosexual, God still loves you. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen? You may not go along with what we do, but God's love is unconditional. You can't do anything to get God to stop loving you. But don't mix up God's love with God's favor. Don't mix up God's love with God's blessings. Those blessings are conditional. Throughout scripture, you find God saying, if you will do this, I will do that. Some folks believe that I just say I love Jesus and the windows of heaven are open to, unto me and they live as they please and they feel because, they, you know, and let me tell you, the church has done a disservice. There was a time, there was a move in the church. Some of you may remember that called Name It and Claim It. There was no onus on the individual to do anything. And there were some preachers moving around and people got excited. Remember that time, Pastor Philip? Name it and claim it. No, it doesn't work that way. You must do this for God to do that. God's favor has some conditions with it. Go in scripture and you will read every promise. There are some conditions with it. it. Has nothing to do with his love. But God is not Santa Claus. Give you what you don't deserve. Are you with me? Just have some freebies, you know. And some folks have left the church because they think, because they've come at the altar and prayed. Or they have asked me to pray for them. They are expecting God to deliver. And it has nothing to do with how they serve God. It doesn't work like that. Amen. So remember this line. If you will do this, God will do that. It's like mathematics. You have to have A plus A. Amen? To get 2A. Hallelujah. So it's the same principle we're using here. If you will do your part, God will do his part. Let's give the Lord a hand clap. Praise the name of the Lord. May you do this so that God can do that. May someone else not handle your this for you. Praise the Lord. Amen. So Solomon had gathered the people and they had prayed in, to dedicate the house to the Lord. He called for everyone to come. He called the people to, to, to also dedicate themselves unto the Lord. And the final part of his prayer in chapter 6, he prayed for God to respond to his prayer. Amen? That God would come down, that the fire of God, the presence of God, because the house was built, the temple was built, but now, God, will you occupy this thing? God doesn't occupy every mind. Do you hear what I'm saying? Amen. He loves you. But, but he's not going to occupy your temple. The Bible says your body is the temple of the living God, but it doesn't mean he's going to occupy your temple because he cannot stay in a house that's unclean. Praise the Lord. Amen. How else will get you to stay? Praise God. And so we're going to read about God's response to Solomon. And when you pray earnestly to the Lord, if you pray and, and believe, if you pray and ask God to show up in your situation,
situation, he will. Can I get an amen in this place here? Amen. If you will do this, God will do that. He says, if you call, help me somebody, I will what? I will answer you and I will do what? I'll show you great and mighty things of which you do not know. But you got to, you got to what? You got to call. If you do this, God will do that. Just bear that in mind. Amen. Amen. So here's God's response to Solomon's prayer. And I want us to read aloud. Something about reading the scripture aloud. So let's read. Now when Solomon had made an end of praying, the fire came down from heaven. You get that? He prayed, and what happened? The fire came down. He did the praying, and God did the fire coming down. Amen? If you will do this, God will. If you will do this, amen. And consume the burnt offering and the sacrifices, and the glory of the Lord filled the house. And the priest could not enter into the house of the Lord because the glory of the Lord had filled the house. And when all the children of Israel saw how the fire came down and the glory of the Lord upon the house, they bowed themselves with their faces to the ground upon the pavement and worshipped and praised the Lord, saying, For he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Because... Because Solomon prayed, and Solomon called the people to a consecration, amen, and they fasted before they prayed, by the way. They did what they were supposed to do. The fire of God came down, and when the fire comes down, his glory is seen. You got it? Verse 4. Then the king and all the people offered sacrifices before the Lord. And King Solomon offered a sacrifice of 20 and 2,000 oxen and 120,000 sheep. So the king and all the people dedicated the house of God. Amen. And the priests waited on their offices, the Levites also with instruments of music of the Lord, which David the king had made to praise the Lord. Because his mercy endureth forever. When David praised by their ministry and the priests sounded trumpets before them, all Israel stood. Amen? So the priest, the pastor, the musicians, the minister of music. They did their part. They didn't make excuses. Amen? They did what they, God had called them to do. And when you begin to do what God has called you to do, you'll see the fire of God coming down. If we as a church begin to take this thing seriously and do what we're supposed to do and stop making excuses and stop murmuring and complaining, we will see the fire of God coming down. You're holding back this great move of God in Randolph. Amen, amen. And question yourself as to what you're not doing and what you're not giving to God. Amen. If you will do this, God will do that. You're going to have to tell the devil, I'm going to break with tradition. I'm going to break with my old ways. I'm going for Jesus. I want to see his glory. I want the fire of God. And no one or nothing is going to stop me from having an encounter with my God. Praise the Lord. Verse 9. And in the eighth day, they made a solemn assembly, for they kept the dedication of the altar seven days, and the feast seven days. And on the three, and on, and on the three and twentieth day of the seventh month, he sent the people away in their, into their tents, glad and married in heart, for the goodness 
that the Lord had shown unto David, and so Solomon entered Israel to his people. Remain standing a little bit. Amen. So you know what? They did their part. Did you get that? They did their part. They did what they were supposed to do. They did the this. It was time for God to do the that. Hallelujah. Verse 12. And the Lord appeared to Solomon. You got that? Because he prayed. We're at verse 12 now. No, verse 11. Thus Solomon finished the house of the Lord and the king's house. And all that came unto Solomon's heart to make the house of the Lord and his own house. He prospered, prosperly faithful. He did a good job. And God is saying, spring of water, do better. You can do better. You really can do better. With your attendance. With your timeliness, amen, with your giving, with your serving in the house, you can do better, man. God is saying enough with the excuses. Praise the name of the Lord. This is my house. And we want the fire of God in this place. Praise the Lord. Amen. So listen to God. Here's God going to do his part. Solomon did. did he did his part. Listen, and the Lord appeared to Solomon that night and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and have chosen this place to myself for a house of sacrifice. If I shut up heaven that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilences upon my people, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, I will forgive their sins, and will heal their land. Father, we thank you for your word. You have made it so clear. If your people will do this, then you, you will do that. And God, we're each one of us there's some things that we're looking towards you to do. And today you're telling us we got to serve you better. we got to be more committed. we got to take care of this. You have that under your total control. For the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. You have founded it upon the seas and you have established it upon the flood. Father, there's nothing we need you have not yet provided. There are no blessings for you to go and, 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 and to create for us to receive. Your blessings are yea and amen in Christ Jesus. You took care of it all. When you created this world, you put in it everything that we would need. You took care of that. Help us to take care of this. Our part is where the problem is. Thank you for your word today. Such a powerful word. We bless you in Jesus' name. We want to see Jesus. Amen. Church, that's who we want to see. And if you read his word, you'll see him in his word. Uh, you don't need somebody to tell you if that's Jesus. When he appears, you will know. Amen. When he shows up in your house, you, you uh, honey, God is here. You with me? Your children will know God is here. When you get up off your knee, your children will know that, that problem is solved in Jesus' name. Amen. We don't have to talk about it anymore. Amen. That's how the old folks worshiped the Lord. They took it to the Lord in prayer. Amen. They prayed and God moved. They did this and God did that. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, so God appeared to Solomon by night and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer. Did you hear that? The whole chapter was all about his prayer. God, show up. God, please come down. God, send fire from heaven. God, make a way. This is your house. Let worship be real in here. Let the power of God come down. God, 
time that there be miracles in this house, signs, wonders, and miracles. And isn't that our prayer? You should be praying. Come on, let's come to the prayer meeting when they have them. Amen. And let's start praying for the fire of God. I'm telling you, if you show up on Saturday morning for prayer, the fire of God will come down. You show up here on Wednesday night for Bible study, the fire of God will come down. If you will do this, church, God will do that. See, for some of you, he ain't going to do it till you do this. Truth be told, don't stone the prophet. When you really mean business, you just get the sign. You get the one. Amen. When you start taking him at his word, when you start trusting him, when you start putting him first, amen. You want God to do some things? He said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. They're not happening because you're not doing the thing. If you will do this, God will do that. But this is going to help you to get through. Now you know the source. You got to know how to tap into the source. Do you follow me? You know, there's water in the pipe. But until you turn the tap, you could stand there the whole year. Not even a drip. Am I right, Elder? You got to turn the tap on. You got to do this so that God will do that. Start praying more. Start serving your God more. Do you hear what I'm saying, church? This is no time to back away. This is no time to cool off. If you do this, God will do that. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So God says, you know, these things are going to happen. It's just the time. It's approaching. The end is near. You ain't seen nothing yet. Hallelujah. Amen. There's going to come a time you don't know who to trust. They'll say one thing today and change their mind tomorrow. But this is how we roll. We roll on our knees before God. Father, in the name of Jesus, in that name that's above every other name, hallelujah, we come before you. We give you thanks, we give you praise, we honor you and we glorify you. In the midst of the storm, see us through, Lord. Turn back the missiles, turn back the ballistic weapons, silence the enemy in the name of Jesus. If you will do this, God will do that. Praise the name of I want you to get a copy of this message, every one of you. And would you give it to somebody? People are so confused out there. Would you do that? Would you give it to a family member? Like I went to church. Please listen to this preacher. Amen. Hallelujah. It says, if my people are not. Praise the name of the Lord. <laughs> The question is, are you a child of God? Are you included in God's favor? I told you that God's favor is not for everybody. Some blessings are just for the child of God. And the unbeliever, they could do whatever they want. They could burn whatever candle they want. They can roll up whatever they want. They can smoke. Whatever they want, they can vape. They can do whatever they, they can chant from now until tomorrow. 
or in the next year say amen to somebody. They can cut themselves. They can cry on their God. Some things are just for the child of God. Say amen to somebody. The promises of this book is for the child of God. Hallelujah. Say amen to somebody. Next week I'm going to continue the message. Next week's message will be this is that. Hallelujah. And now that is referring to the Holy Ghost. Listen, when you got the Holy Ghost, say amen to somebody. You can handle this. When you got the Holy Ghost, this becomes a lot easier. You don't have to do it in your strength. Paul Peter, hallelujah, on the day of Pentecost, when folks were confused, he said, This, help me, somebody, it's that. Say amen. You need to get familiar with what that really is. Repent and be every, every one of you for the remission of sins, hallelujah, and you shall receive that, meaning the Holy Ghost. Say amen, somebody, when you got the Holy Ghost. This becomes easier. Can we give the Lord a hand clap in this place today? Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Some of you are trying to do things with your own strength. You need to get in touch with that, which is the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Stand to your feet. We're going to just praise the Lord. We're just going to glorify him here today. We're getting ready to wrap up, but we're going to leave here triumphantly today. Say amen, somebody. God is good. God is great. There's a way you can get through this new year. If my people who are called by my name, by whose name are you called?
in his peace. May the Lord God watch over you. There will be danger on your left and danger on your right because you have worshipped God this day and surrendered your life to him and you have humbly walked before him. The Lord will keep away all accident and danger. Pestilences. God will keep away from you. The Lord God watches over you. He orders your steps. Wherever you go this week, know that the Lord your God goes with you. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. He will see you through. God bless you.